the second half of the Ten Commandments. Commandment 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. All these commandments talk about how we should love our neighbor as ourselves, And that is what God wanted to tell us through these commandments. So the first or the you know, last five commandments, the sixth commandment is do not commit adultery. In our context, what God tells us is Treat your bodies, your friends' bodies, your parents' bodies as the temple of the Holy Spirit because it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And make sure that how whatever you say or speak about it, you always regard it as the temple of God. Even with your dressing, make sure that you feel that God would approve of the clothes that you wore as a temple for Him. So that when you dress up next time, Keep that question in mind. If you think God does not approve of this temple, then probably you need to find something else to wear. Yeah. Then the next commandment, the seventh commandment, is to not steal. Of course, it's not right for us to take something without permission from others and keep it to ourselves and make it our own. We should not steal. In another context, we should also use very carefully the resources that we are blessed with, especially resources like water, which belongs to all of us. 
But what happens is when we use it carelessly and when we do not, uh, you know, use it very efficiently, we end up stealing it from those of our friends and families or even strangers who could use that water better or who actually need that water more than us. So using our resources efficiently is also another way of living up to this commandment. The eighth commandment, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. This commandment basically says, stand up for the truth and never lie. You know, when I was small, uh, I had a friend who was, uh, who had a situation where uh, uh, she actually, you know, copied in that exam. Um, but uh, she was really struggling to, uh, you know, admit that. And so she blamed another friend, saying that, you know, that friend helped her copy when that friend was not even involved. So what happened was, uh, because my friend, you know, actually made a false, a wrong statement against his other friend, his other friend also, you know, got the tag of, you know, that she had copied or she had allowed another person to copy. Because of which her image, her identity also became of that of, you know, someone who copied. And with that one lie which my friend said, so, you know, lying, is not just just saying some words and getting rid of the situation, but it also has an impact, especially with the person that you know is going through uh, or has been accused of that lie. Yeah. Then the next two commandments I would like to combine to one: do not uh, covet your neighbor's wife and do not covet your neighbor's goods. So, in our context, uh, I think God is asking us to not be greedy. Do not be envious. Uh, when I was uh, young, I uh, did not like the way I looked. So I, I always looked at my cousins, my classmates, and I would say, wow, they're so pretty. Look at me, I'm so you know, not pretty. And I always thought of things like this, and it made me very bitter with him. And it also reminds me of what, uh, you know, our Pope uh, has. Uh, Pope Francis has mentioned some time back, he said uh, becoming greedy you know, uh, or allowing ourselves to become greedy or allowing ourselves to be greedy of things or envious or jealous of things uh, makes us bitter, makes us angry, makes us negative, makes us uh, all these uh, difficult feelings come into us just because we are starting to get jealous of something or something. And uh, this continued, this process of feeling, you know, uh, jealous of uh, what my cousins had or uh, uh, jealous of the beauty that they had, I continued to uh, encourage these uh, thoughts in my head or I did not stop them basically until a point where I realized that, hey, that's not true. I am beautiful in my own way and that's when I realized that I should not be jealous of my my uh, you know, my cousins or my friends, and uh, and that was a realization for me. And I really started to thank God for blessing me with whatever I have. And saying thank you to God changed my heart. So from being bitter, I became grateful. And that was how I ended up, you know, not failing that commandment of. Uh, wanting what my friends had or uh, being jealous of what they have. So this is all I have for today with these last five commandments. God bless you. A little story on forgiveness. It was 7 a.m. and the sound of Sasha's alarm clock reminded her of the excitement this school day would bring. Yeah! Sasha shouted. It was show and tell day in her second grade class and she could hardly wait to share the special birthday necklace that her grandmother had given her. 
Sasha darted to the bathroom to wash her face and brush her teeth. She was already dressed when her mother checked in on her. Wow, look at you. You are up all by yourself. I guess you are being more responsible now that you are 8 years old. Oh mom, don't be silly. Sasha laughed. I'm just really excited about today. I can't wait to show everyone the special cross necklace that grandma gave me. The beads make it so pretty. Okay, sweetie, said Sasha's mom. Just remember to take it off before recess and put it in your backpack. like we discussed Okay mom Sasha shouted as she whooshed down the stairs for breakfast And that's why this necklace is so special Sasha beamed as she showed the class the eight beautiful beads on the necklace at the end of her show and tell presentation As Sasha returned to her seat. Mrs. Griffin asked the class to clear their desks before recess. Sasha remembered what her mother said and tucked the necklace safely into her backpack. All the children went outside to play except for Rachel and Blake, who had finished their writing assignment before going out. We are finished with today's maths problems. Mrs. Griffin told the class at the end of the school day. It's time to go home now. So, please pack your bags and prepare for dismissal. As Mrs. Griffin raised the board, she was startled by a frantic cry. Oh no! cried Sasha. What happened to the beads on my necklace? Sasha's eyes began to well up with tears. I put my necklace safely away in my bag before recess. But now all the beads are gone. Sasha looked very very sad. Class, does anyone know what happened to Sasha's necklace? Mrs. Griffin asked. All the students shook their head, no. Except for Rachel and Blake. They were both looking down at their shoes. Rachel, Blake, is there something you want to share? Mrs. Griffin asked. They continued to look away sheepishly. Mrs. Griffin dismissed the other students and asked Rachel and Blake to stay behind. along with Sasha Once the other students left Rachel blurted out Oh Mrs Griffin I'm so sorry The necklace was so pretty that I wanted to see it again So I pulled the necklace from Sasha's backpack while she was at recess Blake spoke up also Mrs Griffin I'm really sorry too When Rachel got the necklace from Sasha's bag, I began teasing her because I didn't see why the necklace was so special. When I grabbed it from Rachel, the necklace fell to the floor and the beads came off. Well, Mrs. Griffin said, "You both know that it's not right to take something that belongs to someone else." I know you didn't mean to break the beads off but they are gone and now Sasha is very upset Do you know where the beads are Blake pointed to his desk They are inside my desk he said quietly Mrs Griffin got the beads from the desk and smiled Look Sasha the beads didn't break Your necklace can be fixed. Sasha sighed with relief, but she was still very mad. 
Blake and Rachel looked at Sasha. We are very sorry for what we did to your necklace. Sasha stared down at the necklace. Her brow was still furrowed and she was silent for what seemed like an eternity. Suddenly Sasha looked up at Blake and Rachel with a big smile. They were both puzzled. You're not mad anymore, Sasha, Rachel asked. Well, I guess I'm still a little mad. But I just remembered something grandma told me and I now understand what she means. So, I'm smiling because my necklace means even more to me now all because of what you did. Rachel and Blake were really confused now. You see, I learned from grandma that the cross is special because Jesus died on the cross so that my sins can be forgiven. Even though he didn't do anything wrong, he died for me and for all of us. The only thing he asks is that I forgive others who do wrong things to me just like I have been forgiven. So, I forgive you. Now I understand what this cross means. It's not the beads that make it special. It is what Jesus did that makes it special. Mrs. Griffin smiled very proudly at her three students. They learned a lesson on that day that was more important than anything she could have taught them. Forgive others as Jesus has forgiven you. In the time of King Saul, the Philistines made war on the people of Israel. And in the army of the Philistines was the great Goliath. His helmet was bronze, his breastplate was bronze, and even the armor on his legs was bronze. Goliath shouted to the soldiers of Israel, let one man come to fight me. If he wins, you will be our conquerors. If he loses, you will be our slaves. Goliath shouted these words at the army of Israel morning and evening for forty days. Saul and his soldiers were terrified at the size of this huge man. Now in that land in Bethlehem, there lived a man named Jesse who had eight sons. The three oldest sons were soldiers in the army of Israel. The youngest, David, was a shepherd who watched over his father's flock. Jesse said to David, Go, bring your brothers this bread and cheese. Then come back and tell me if they are well, for they are in the valley with the army of Israel. When David came to the valley, he saw the two armies facing each other. He saw Goliath come forward and heard the words he was shouting. The Israelites told David, the king will heap great riches on the man who kills this giant. David went to find King Saul and told him, I will fight the giant Philistine, who believes he is mightier than our God. I am only a shepherd, but when the lion and the bear try to take 
a sheep from me i fight them and god protects me from their claws and saul said go and may the lord be with you saul gave david his helmet and breastplate but they were too heavy he could not move he took them off and went down to the stream there he chose five smooth stones and put them in his shepherd's pouch then david walked toward the philistine with a sling in his hand the giant laughed when he saw him but david cried out it is not by lance or sword that our god gives victory david took a single stone and hurled it with his sling the stone struck goliath on the forehead and he crumpled to the ground dead the soldiers of israel rushed forward with a great war cry and the army of the philistines fled before them Hello again. Hope you've been having fun. But now it's time to learn about a new saint. So welcome back to Let Saint a story. Here we are at the gates of heaven. In the center, we have Saint John Bosco. Towards the left, we have Saint Francis of Assisi. Towards the right, we have Saint Ignatius of Loyola. For those of you who took part in the activity called Who Said Saint last week, and if you were able to figure out who the saint for this week is, congratulations. For those of you who couldn't figure out the saint, today is the day you get to meet the saint and make a new friend. So let's go ahead, let's meet the saint. Let me remind you that this is going to be just like the previous times. Imagine you're meeting the saint at a hotel or a nearby park. You try to get to know more about the saint by asking a few questions, thereby making a friend. So let's begin our conversation with the saint. This is the person you see in front of you. She is a sister who looks welcoming, friendly, and graceful. So you start off by asking the question. Hi sister, it's so nice to meet you. May I know your name? To which the saint replies, Greetings, my dear. My name is Saint Therese of Lisieux, popularly known as the Little Flower of Jesus. The Little Flower of Jesus. That's a very nice title. How was your childhood, sister? I was born on the 2nd of January 1873 to Mary Azelie Querin Martin and Louis Martin at Alessio Fonts. My parents are both saints. They had 9 children out of which only 5 had survived, me being one of them. Due to this, they placed me under the care of a nurse named Rose for about 15 months. My mother passed away due to cancer when I was just 4 years old. Before passing, she placed me under the care of my sister Pauline. I am so sorry to hear that. What happened then, sister? My sister and I got along well. She took real good care of me and we both became almost inseparable. In a few months, I became very ill. I was almost about to die. My sister asked me to pray to Mother Mary to cure me of my illness. So, me and my sisters prayed to Mother Mary. To my surprise, I saw Mother Mary for a short time when she smiled at me. She disappeared shortly afterwards. As soon as she disappeared, I was completely cured. 
Wow, that's such a great miracle. Tell me more. Well, in my household, I was a pampered little girl. I used to cry a lot over small trivial matters. In school and at home too. I couldn't control my emotions very easily. After a few years, two of my sisters joined a convent. Seeing them, I too wanted to join them. But I knew very well that a Carmelite convent had very rigorous and strict rules. And if I were to join the convent, I would have to learn to control my own emotions. How did you learn to control your emotions? It all started on the eve of Christmas in the year 1886, when I was 14 years old. It was customary in France for parents or elders to hide gifts for kids in their shoes on Christmas Eve. My sister Celine had hid a gift for me. On saying this, my dad scolded Celine, telling her that I am not a kid anymore and that I had to become emotionally stronger if I had to join the convent. I heard the conversation. Normally, I would have burst out in tears, but this time, I didn't. I believe that this was the moment Jesus had entered my heart, slowly transforming me for a noble cause. Did you join the convent after this incident? Yes, but it had a whole lot of hurdles along the way. Initially, I was refused entry into the Carmelite convent as I was too young. My father then took me to visit the Pope. Upon meeting him and after having completed a lot of formalities, I was granted entry into the Carmelite convent. The convent life wasn't easy. The facilities were basic. It was cold too. It was nothing like I had imagined before. But I still thanked God for giving me the opportunity and I did my best while I was there. How did your journey to sainthood begin? Well, my father had a series of strokes and he began hallucinating. My friends at that time began humiliating him. But I did not throw hatred back at them. I, instead, smiled at them. So this is what I did to become a saint. I used to do the simplest and most ordinary of things with a grateful heart and without complaining. I smiled at everyone at the convent. Sometimes I even took the blame for other people's faults. I used to fall sick often, but I always used to pray. I made sacrifices, however small, for the sake of others. I basically wanted to attain sainthood by doing little things. I took my vows on 8th September 1890 and took my name as Therese of Child Jesus. I wrote many letters describing my devotion to Jesus. Due to some administrative concerns at the convent, I was supposed to be a novice of the convent for the rest of my days. That didn't really bother me as I just wanted to do little good deeds for people around me. A few years later, I was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which was untreatable at the time. Saying this, my sister felt terrible and asked me to write memoirs so that she could tell the world my story and my thoughts. I did as she said, and my sister compiled all of my memoirs along with my letters. You can find these letters and memoirs in the book Story of a Soul. When did you pass away, sister? I passed on to heaven on the 30th of September 1897 at the age of 24. My last words were, My God, I love you. Upon my death, my sister Pauline, who had compiled my writings, had sent out copies to the various convents. My childlike dedication to Christ and my way of doing little good deeds to people appeals to many Christians and inspired them. Sister, what can I do to be more like you? My child, all you have to do is have a childlike innocence 
and do good to others, no matter how small it might seem. Make small sacrifices and love others like yourself. Do not complain, just keep doing your work with love and care. In a single phrase, do ordinary things in an extraordinary manner. It was really great meeting you, St. Therese. It was great meeting you too. Keep praying for me and pray to me. I too will be praying for you from up above. Before I leave, I would like to leave you with this quote. Miss no single opportunity of making some small sacrifice. Here by a smiling look, there by a kindly word. Always doing the smallest right and doing it all for love. Good going! You made a friend in St. Therese. But like always, it's what you learn that counts. I hope you had fun meeting her and I hope you learned a lot from her life. Doing little deeds every day to people around you, you too can become a saint just like her. You don't have to do extraordinary things. You can do ordinary things in an extraordinary manner. This brings us back to the gates of heaven. So right now, these three saints are joined by St. Therese. And this brings us to the next activity. Who's that saint? Towards the left, we have a silhouette of a saint. And towards the right, we have a clue pertaining to the silhouette. The clue reads out, Doctor of the Church, Sinner to Saint. Clubbing the silhouette on the left and the clue on the right, if you can figure out who the saint is, type the answer in the comment section below. If you cannot figure out who the saint is, tune in next week to learn more about the saint. Thank you and saint in your life. So dear children, I hope you had a great time. The resources of this week too will be sent to you by mail and by WhatsApp. Hope you will do your assignments and do your homework like you've already done over the past few weeks and you will send it to us by the email ID that has already been given to you. So children, have a great week ahead and hope you have a really blessed time. God bless.